Hi Synth Lovers. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing well. This video is part of a series of videos in which I am designing and building my own DIY modular synth from scratch. All documentation from this project, including schematics and Gerber files, will become available on my Patreon as we progress. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing and hit the like button. Leave a comment if you have questions or suggestions, or, if you just want to say hello. In this episode, we will explore what we need, to make a voltage-controlled oscillator, or VCO. What is a voltage-controlled oscillator anyway? Well, it is a kind of an electronic oscillator. According to Wikipedia, an electronic oscillator is an electronic circuit that produces a periodic oscillating electronic signal. Wikipedia also states that oscillators convert direct current, or DC, from a power supply to an alternating current or AC signal. Long story short, it is an electronic circuit that converts DC to AC. There are many types of oscillators. Although you could use some of these in a synth environment, discussing them all would make this a long and boring video. Let's just stick with a type that suits our purpose, which is the voltage-controlled oscillator. A voltage-controlled oscillator is an oscillator, that allows us to control the output frequency by applying a voltage to its input. This voltage is appropriately named, control voltage. The higher the control voltage is, the higher the output frequency will be. Our oscillator will be used to generate music. Therefore, we must also consider the frequency range in which our oscillator will operate. Obviously, for a synthesizer we need an oscillator that operates in the audio range. Yes, I know, we use sub-audio or low-frequency oscillators in synthesizers as well. Low-frequency oscillators, or LFOs, will be touched upon later in this series. For this episode, we will focus on audio frequency oscillators. In Euro rack, there is a standard for the voltage that controls the oscillator pitch. This is called, volt per octave. This concept was introduced by Bob Moog in the 60s and has become the Euro rack standard for control voltages that determine the frequency at the oscillator output. 1 volt per octave simply means that for a raise of 1 volt in control voltage, the oscillator's frequency must raise 1 octave. For example, the pitch that corresponds with a 5 volt CV input must be exactly 1 octave higher than the pitch that corresponds with a 4 volt CV input. An octave contains 12 notes. This means that, every note in an octave is represented by a voltage that differs 1 twelfth of a volt from its neighbor. This also means that the volt per octave is a linear scale. However, the corresponding frequencies are not linear. The frequency will double for each raise in octave. For instance, the frequency represented by 5 volt, let's say that is an A at 440 Hz, is double the frequency represented by 4 volts, which would be an A at 220 Hz. Hence, the frequency of every semitone is 2 to the power of 1 12th times higher than its predecessor, which means that the frequency follows a logarithmic scale. Bottom line is, our voltage-controlled oscillator must be able to convert the linear control voltage into a logarithmic frequency response. Browsing the internet, many designs for a VCO can be found. I will mention a few. There is for instance, Eve Eusen's designs for his US-1 project. It produces saw and square signals at 1 volt per octave. It is based on a circuit designed by TW Stride. There is another one from Eve, build for his Eusynth project. Then, there is the 1978 project book of Elector magazine that introduces a VCO module for the format modular synth. Moritz Klein created a VCO that uses thermistors and a transistor pair to compensate for temperature variations. Sam Battle, the guy from Look Mom No Computer, also created some designs, a simple one that is using a 555 timer IC. And another one that is using the famous CEM3340. Sam's idea to use a CEM3340 was intriguing me a bit, so I looked a bit deeper into that. As it is the heart of my Behringer Pro 1, I know how that chip sounds. Not bad at all. Right from its release, in 1980, many major synth builders started using the chip in their synths. You can find the CEM3340 in the Roland SH101 and MC202, the Memory Moog, the Sequential Profit 5 and the Pro 1, and Oberheim's OB8, OBXA and OBSX. Just to name a few. So, let's see what this chip is capable of. At the first glance, the CEM3340 is ticking almost all the boxes. The scale can be trimmed to a desired volt per octave. Check. It outputs pulse, triangle and sawtooth waveforms. No sine waveform? 
It has a soft and hard sync input, as well as a linear FM input. That is nice. The positive supply voltage range is between plus 10 volts and plus 18 volts. The negative supply voltage range is between minus 4.5 volts and minus 18 volts. The Euro rack standard for the power supply is plus and minus 12 volts, so, that is okay. I also see some drawbacks though. It's a pity that it does not have a sine wave output. If I want that, I will need to add a circuit that converts the sawtooth wave into a sine wave. That should not be too difficult. I also notice that the signal levels for all three waveforms differ from each other and, more important, from the Euro rack standard. So, I will have to fix that in the schematics. All in all, this chip is very suitable for my first VCO module. Maybe I will make it a dual VCO. Now that we have chosen the basic building block for our first VCO, we can proceed to the next step, designing the circuit. I will do that in the next episode. In that episode I will also explain how hard and soft sync works and what linear FM means. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing and hit the like button. Leave a comment if you have questions or suggestions. Or, if you just want to say hello. You can support me by becoming a patron and follow me on social media. You can find the links to my Patreon and social media in the description. Have a nice day and see you next time.